meh, smile, sometimes they'll giggle, you know, hmm. but the authoritarian, the, the guy that takes his job way too seriously or the person that's in it because they're a atypical sociopath, like hmm. I discussed earlier, they get angry. I mean, it starts off with just a little bit of annoyance, but the longer the, the First Amendment auditor gives them the silent treatment, the more and more they get worked up because... That type of personality is used to the kind of intimidation, hmm. and they're used to the kind of um, uh, nervousness that most people express when they're dealing with law enforcement. Now, if you're calm mm -hmm. and you're not intimidated, a lot of these people just go off. They'll go from zero to 60 in like three seconds. Uh, just just because you're not respecting, uh, you know, just like uh, Cartman and... and uh, South Park, you know, you're not respecting their authority. So I think First Amendment auditors are, you know, they're doing a public service because think about it this way. Mm. If someone's doing a First Amendment audit mm -hmm. of a of a federal courthouse, right? Mm -hmm. And the police come and uh, this happens. Sometimes the Federal Protective Service uh, will pepper spray or arrest a person that's just standing on the sidewalk in the public area where it's legal to film. Um, and, you know, or they're arrested over it. Now, if a regular average Joe comes along hmm. and they want to, you know, do a Facebook Live video about their court case, mm -hmm. or they want to take a note on their uh, voice memo with their phone, or take a video to remind themselves of something they want to talk about during their court case, mm -hmm. or if a any journalist wants to interview somebody who just had a court case, the First Amendment auditors testing that that law enforcement response, mm -hmm. and they're publicizing how law enforcement interacted with a member of the public doing nothing more than what they're legally allowed to do. If it wasn't for First Amendment auditors, mm. there would be quite a few people that didn't know. They'd be ignorant of the fact that you can legally film in front of a federal courthouse, but... You know, they wouldn't know that without these activists doing this very important work. Wow. Now, most people, when a cop walks up to you and says, sir, turn your camera off, you can't, you can't use it here, they're just going to, you know, give fealty to the authority of that cop and just turn their phone off and their mm -hmm. camera off, sure. you know. So it's the job of activists to put themselves out there on the line to maybe risk arrest or maybe a risk being hurt so that the rest of us can enjoy these rights and freedoms and protections that we have. If it wasn't for activists in the Underground Railroad, you would still be able to buy a black person on a public square. Mm. You know, like, if it wasn't for activists, the, the teetotalers and the, uh, the suffragettes, before women had the right to vote, mm -hmm. women would still be thought of as, you know, these little trophies sitting in the room sewing as as sort of the pseudo property of their husband if it wasn't for activists our society would never evolve in a positive way so that that's just one type of uh police accountability activists there's some people that are just concerned with the courts and the way the courts work and they just do lectures on youtube and they talk about you know people's civil rights and the constitution and they're academic and they never leave the house Mm -hmm. You know, but I think it's really important um, to digress back to you uh, starting or just your audience starting police accountability organizations is just just the quickly the, the quick backbone of everything you need. You just write out your mission statement, what you want to accomplish. And it's just, you know, five or six sentences, mm -hmm. then publish it. And then most municipalities uh, have a Facebook group. So I would recommend sending your mission statement to either the public information officer of the municipality you want to cop watch in, hmm. or just send it to their Facebook group and say, hey, guys, you know, there's going to be people uh, patrolling with me, and we're going to be out filming. We don't mean you any harm, and we're just going to document. Beautiful. Um, and then find yourself that buddy. You know, once you get a partner to film with, it, it, it gets so much smoother. And it's so much easier. Mm-hmm. You know, that that that's beautiful. Uh, you've just covered a, a lot of stuff here. Um, what was that you said a moment ago? I was going to ask you a question about it. Uh, I was the First Amendment auditor. You know, that's fascinating. I had no clue. I've never even heard of that before. And why that somehow relates to the person being silent. 
Um, go ahead, if you will, Mike, and share what that's well, about. Well, sure. Well, the, the, the silent bit is actually, you have a right against uh, self-incrimination according to the U.S. Constitution. So basically, you have a right not to testify against yourself uh, and, and incriminate yourself. And when the police interact with a citizen, they're considered an officer of the court. So anything you, well, check this out. When the cops read you your rights, they they say anything you say can, you have, first of all, the very first thing they say is you have the right, right to remain silent. That's the very first thing they say, and there's a reason why. It's because, you know, they're there. You do have a reason, right, to remain silent. 99.99% of the people out there will just keep talking and talking and talking. And when I'm filming the police interaction and I can't, I can't see what's saying, being said. I just see their lips moving for 10 minutes. Mm. Uh, you can hear me in a lot of the videos. I'm just looking down at my feet going, oh, my God, just shut up. <laughs> Stop talking. You can't help yourself. And I'll get into that in a little bit. But it, the, they literally say when they Mirandize somebody before questioning, you have a right to remain silent. And then the very next sentence is, anything you say can and will be used against you. Right. Anything right. you say. What part of anything you say did they miss? <laughs> Sorry, well, go, go and, ahead. And this is the beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what part about that sentence don't people understand? But, like, <laughs> it doesn't say, hey, you know, if you explain yourself really well, make a really good solid rock argument, oh, rock that's great. solid argument for why you should leave. No, it doesn't <laughs> say that. It says you have the right to remain silent and anything you say will be used. And here's the thing, right? In court, I've seen, you know, uh, lawyers that, that have published videos, there's a, one of the most educational, beautiful pieces of video you can find on YouTube about your civil rights is simply never talk to the police or never talk to the cops. Hmm. It's, a, it's a video, I think it's like 40 minutes long, and the, the two people that are making a presentation is a former, the first person is a former uh, police detective, and the second person is a trial lawyer for criminal defense. So there's a criminal defense attorney and a former police detective doing a lecture on why you shouldn't talk to the police. It's beautiful. I'll, I'll shoot you a link so you can share this with your listeners underneath the video, and it's great. But, uh, yeah, so anything you say can and will be used against you.